Let's talk about how to create a magazine article. Now, last week we talked about how to create drop caps, and that's just one small part. You know, obviously inside magazine articles, you usually have columns of text. And right now, sometimes what we're doing is we're just creating one huge block across, and that's typically what we think of when we think of lead magnets or content upgrades or coursework workbooks, right? They're usually not set up as columns like a magazine and it does help to break the text up. It helps to make it more interesting. You can throw some images in there. So let's just talk today about the different layouts that some or most magazine articles have and how you can recreate that yourself in Adobe InDesign. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses to create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if that sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below and I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. Today we're going to talk about the perfect magazine layout and when I say perfect, I mean the perfect magazine layout for you and your business because that could definitely vary depending on who you are, who you're trying to attract, and what you're trying to accomplish with that online digital magazine. All right, so that's step one. The second step is figuring out your section. So this is really easy, and I promise it's going to make your magazine uh, content creation so much easier. The next thing you should think about is, are you going to make this an interactive magazine? So with online magazines, this is something I think a lot of people don't think about, is you can actually take that magazine and it's online, you can make everything clickable. And when I say clickable, you have actual links, right? If you have a paper magazine, that's not clickable. Uh, you can insert videos, you can insert quizzes. Uh, and again, think too, if you are going to leave this as a digital only, or if you would like the option to make it digital and or print. Now, if that is the case, then I strongly believe you should follow the rules for print magazine, not for digital. Don't worry about making it interactive. So, and plus that honestly, that's a whole different skill set with inside Adobe InDesign. So if you're just starting out, even if you have digital, maybe don't go for the interactive, put that out as something later as like a 2.0 version of your magazine once you get some more subscribers and get some more uh, momentum going. Now, how do you want those actual pages to be laid out? Now, pages, page layouts are very different based on the type of information that you are sharing. So let's look at some pages together. First up is glamours, do's and don'ts. Now I found some of these just by Googling and you can also obviously go to the store and buy some magazines and I would start bookmarking pages page layouts that you like and what sections those correspond to. So don't just put post-it notes, put a post-it note with, this will correspond to my cookbook section. This will correspond to my fitness exercise section or something like that. So over here, um, if you're doing fashion, this might be a good do's and don'ts, right? You know, it's kind of funny, they crossed out her eyes, it's obviously Gwen Stefani uh, in both pictures, but this is just something that is kind of accepted. People like to see, um, and again, when I say stand out, I mean stand out by putting your own flair on things, but still kind of follow the rules uh, on industry standards. Um, and again, you can see they put a then and a now, a then and a now. So that kind of just helps people's brains to understand very quickly what they're looking at. And, you know, it has a little sort of caption here and then a takeaway over here. So let's go ahead and look at another one. Um, so over here, street style, this is a little different and something else you should note too is how many fonts do they have, right? So typically on magazines, um, they maybe have three to four different fonts per page and that's it. You know, they, you won't see a lot of script fonts, even though they are beautiful and I'm sure you're probably like me and you have so many because you can't stop buying them. Uh, but really with script fonts, you should use those sparingly because they are very difficult to read. So you'll notice this has what looks kind of like Kodak moment pictures. And over here you have some text and this is offset over to the right. You know, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Um, something else to keep in mind. And here's another section whoops, with pictures over here, celebrities and their dogs. So you can see this is probably 90% images, just 5, 10% text, right? Or 5% 
of the um, text in the pictures and 5% over here as the, as the title page. So this would be a nice layout, but you've seen that they have started to resize those images so that they are kind of off center. So it doesn't look like a just a grid. So it kind of makes it a little more interesting for your eye to look at. So really, again, when you think about magazines, sometimes it's just training your eye to look for these different things. Same thing here with all of this text. Uh, you know, this is, again, broken up into sections and it has blocks and the do's and the don'ts like we saw before. That's a huge thing in magazines. So that's how this is broken up. Uh, there was something else I wanted to show you. Okay, so this is the biggest area, and we'll talk about this later, on how to shape text around an object. This is probably the hallmark of what makes a magazine layout look so much more interesting than a typical workbook or an ebook or anything else. You can see the text has sort of flowed around her leg over here. Same thing, the text is flowing around her head. And well, these are just squares over here, but that is pretty much the hallmark of what makes magazines interesting. And same thing over here with Selena Gomez. This is in Spanish, but you can see that the text has been written onto different parts of the furniture. That's why people probably purposely used a monocolor or unicolor, I'm not sure what the word is, but a solid color uh, for furniture or props so that they could put text inside of there. All right, so go out, your first assignment is simply to go out, look at magazines within your genre, your, I should say genre, within your niche, your industry. So let me recap. The first thing you need to do is decide what industry you're in. The second thing you need to do is start researching magazines. And the third thing you need to do is start creating the sections and the themes that you want inside your magazine, the major table of content areas. And then the fourth thing is finding layouts to fit with inside each of those themes. All right, once you do that, I will see you back here for part two, and we'll start talking about creating actual layouts for different pages. Okay, I hope that was helpful, and I look forward to helping you do a magazine layout in InDesign. Bye!